Thanks for tuning in, everybody. My name is Jay LaPlanche. I'm the pastor here at Motivation Church. I'm just excited that you all have joined us online, re-streaming, re-watching this message. God has been doing so many great things at Motivation Church, and we're excited that you decided to be a part of it. We started this new series called Planted. Rather than me re-preach it, I'd rather you see what God did already. Check it out. We are in a series. What's our series called? Planted. That means somebody's been here, and we're on week six, and I'm telling you, it has been has it been good to anybody so far? And um, I think God's doing some things. And so um, it was almost a year to this week. It'll be this week, a year, where I kind of preached this, preached this thought, preached this. And I was going over some stuff. And um, I was looking over these notes, right? And I saw a, a message that um, Robin had been working on before. And I was like, man, everything God is saying to me, he's repeating it, but he gave me more. Somebody shout more. more. And so um, I, got, I got something fresh for you, um, but I got a little bit of leftovers mixed in it. And uh, if anybody knows how to cook in this room, you understand what I'm talking about. When, when, you have, when you have leftovers, you don't just put it in a microwave. That's for average people. When you really anointed... You make a whole new meal out of something that you had left over. So we're going we're gonna to flow with it. And I just, I, man, I don't, I don't know. Last week I pushed to get through it. And I don't want to rush, but I think, I think there's something for us today. And I was thinking about where we're going, right? I've been thinking about how we're moving. And I'm thinking about the doors opening and every week. And not just weekly, like several times weekly. Um, I've had testimonies that I will share over the next few weeks. Now, I'm trying to, I'm holding it in because y'all know I like to tell you good news. And I be trying to hold it in like, oh, don't say it, don't say it, don't say it. And I've got so many calls. Marquis, don't even, don't even try to do it. Uh, and every now and then I'll share a little bit with some people that can handle it. Um, but daily, just things have been happening. It was like 2 in the morning this morning. I was up and I got these emails and I was excited because... God was just showing me more. And like, look, look. And I told my wife, I said, listen, if I get one more of these, I can't control myself. It's going to be crazy. So I don't know what's going to happen. But uh, in his book, Necessary Endings, Henry Cloud says this. He says, endings are as necessary as beginnings. And the only way that you will truly get to the place that God has for you in life is if you become more comfortable with necessary endings and you begin to execute them in a loving way. But in her message, The Purpose of Pruning, the great theologian, elder, elect, Robin McCaddy says, Pruning is a process of proactive endings. And as humans, we tend to dislike endings, and sometimes we even fight them. I appreciate what Henry Cloud says. I appreciate what Robin McCaddy says. But let me tell you what Jesus said in John chapter 15, verses 1 through 5. He says, I am the vine, the true vine. And my father is the gardener. and He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit. While every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes it so that it will be even more fruitful. He said, you are already clean because of the word I have spoken to you. He says, remain in me as I also remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. I am the vine, and you are the branches. And if you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. But apart from me, you can do nothing. I, I want to take a few moments in part six of this series. And I want I want to really preach from the subject pruning power. Somebody say pruning power. 
One of the things that I, I want you to see is that Jesus, when he's talking about the life of the believer, he says that every believer should have a fruitful life. Having a fruitful life does not always mean you're going to be wealthy and rich. Having a fruitful life does not mean you're going to obtain everything that you desire in life. Having a fruitful life does not mean that everything is going to flow perfect. Your three-year plan, five-year plan, ten-year plan, and you're going to walk in the sunset heavily, happily ever after. But he says, I want you to be fruitful. In other words, he says, I want you to be productive. And, and whatever area I call you to, whatever place that I've assigned you to, <clears throat> whatever thing I'm drawing you to, I want you to be productive. Somebody shout productive. productive. So it's interesting that he uses trees, vines, and fruit to explain purpose. And he says this. This is really big. He says, I have chosen you to do one thing. What is that one thing? He says, produce. That, that my purpose and calling you is so that you can produce. But if we can, if I can just help make it a little clearer, it's not really you producing, but it's him being productive through you. So it's all God, but he uses you. He, he wants to use you, so he wants to make sure that you're turned on for him so that you can produce. This microphone has purpose. But if I turn it off, it's not going to be effective for the purpose in which I'm holding it. I have to make sure I turn it on so that it can produce what I'm trying to produce in the world. I hope y'all with me. And many of us have the label but not the power. So we're tuned in, but not turned on. So we show up every week, but we're not producing because our power is off. And every week we're waiting for, oh God, we're waiting for someone else to, Pastor, I need you to turn me on today. Worship team, I need you to turn me on today. Church, I need you to turn me on today. So instead of coming turned up, you're coming waiting for somebody to press power in your own life. And so what he's trying to get you to understand is that you have to stop waiting improperly. Watch this. Because dead weight causes dead weight. Oh, God. Y'all catch it. I'll let you work it out. Dead weight. W-E-I-G-H-T. I got to ask. <laughs> Leads to W, dead, W-A-I-T. In other words, when you're in a space, we talked about this last week. We were talking about, you know, God being able to produce through us while we're carrying, we're under pressure. I want you to understand that many of us are turned off because of the pressure. And so because we're waiting for God to do something that he's already given us the power, the ability, and the desire to do, we're waiting dead. Because of dead weight, we're waiting dead. And so instead of having life while we're in the process of becoming, we're just not becoming and we're putting all of the responsibility on God when maybe God has already given us enough to work with until change comes. So many of us will come and we'll listen and we'll sit and we'll put on our label and we'll call ourselves whatever we call ourselves and identify with God however we identify with him, but never really see ourselves in a place of maturity and production. And I'm really calling you to, to a place of maturity this year. I'm sorry I'm not trying to make you feel good this year. I really want to call you to a place of maturity. You've got feel-good messages. You've got popcorn messages. Listen, you've been on YouTube for a whole year. Well, you got a chance to watch all your favorite preachers and singers and get all the cotton candy messages you want. You're going to make it. You're going to feel good. Everything's going to be great. you got enough of that. Now we need something that's a little bit more sobering so that you can take it in and mature. That you can take it and say, you know what, let me think about this so I can process my life. Because the problem is, many of us are trying to produce without process. So we shout in church and we live like hell in the world. And he's saying there has to be something different. So I want to talk to you about pruning power. And here's the first thing I want you to write down. I only got a few minutes. 
don't know where my clock went. Somebody better find my clock. But I want you to, I want you to write this down because 90% of people who take notes when I preach go to heaven. In verses 1 through 3, watch what it says. Jesus says, I am the true vine, and my Father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit, while every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes so that it will be even more fruitful. You are already clean because of the word I have spoken to you. Write this down. Number one, pruning is for the planted. This is an exclusive point. This point is not for everybody. This is for the planted. Pruning is for the planted. You got to get it. And some of y'all are like, whew, good, because I ain't getting planted. You got to understand, pruning is for the planted. He said, my father, he said, I am the true vine, and my father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch. Watch this. Watch what he says. He says, in me. Don't miss this. He says, he cuts off. God will cut off every branch that's connected. That's not producing, which says that you can be saved and not produce. That you can be a Christian and not produce. That you can be active and not produce. That you can come to church and not produce. That you can have a title and not produce. You can be here more than these chairs and still not produce. And he says, every branch in me that is unfruitful, it doesn't bear fruit. He cuts off. What are you saying? If I don't do something, he cuts me off. What he's saying is, I've got to start cutting unnecessary weight. The people that are just there, the, the, the people that just have the label but not the lifestyle, i got to cut it. Because I have to show you, if you stay comfortable in this place, then you'll never move into the more. And so God will start shaking your tree. Oh, he'll deacon that job. Shake it up. The, you know, he'll shake, he'll shake your tree and start doing some things. Watch this. But you can't be absent and expect to receive. It's going to get uncomfortable. You, you, you can't be absent and expect to receive because you can't be pruned by God if you're not in position with God. Because I told you pruning... It is for the planted. God only plants or he only prunes the planted. He only prunes the planted. Watch this. So the work happens for those who are present. And it's amazing to me how many people are so often not present but want to walk in the promises. Isn't it interesting? Even in your own lives, you do the work. But your kids get the benefits. Anybody know what I'm talking about? You do all this work and you got people in your life. What do we call them? They're leeches. You call my kid a leech? Yes. A little leech. I thought his name was Kyrie. Leech one. I got seven of them. And a dog. Now I got eight leeches. One with fur. But here's what I'm saying. The reality of this is that many people want the results of pruning without the process of it. So they want to receive the promise. They want to receive the blessing. They want to receive what God has for them, but don't want to endure the process of it. Watch this. So those who are present get the poor. Y'all remember I told you this a few weeks ago. Guard your poor or you'll be left poor. Tell you, I, I used to rap back in the day. Guard your poor or you'll be left poor. What do you mean? Stop depositing valuables in people who don't value what you value. Because you'll be diminishing what God has given you on people who won't appreciate it. Now, I'm not saying there's not an assignment. There are people that need what you have. But there are some people who have already shown you that they don't want what you got. And, and can I just pause here? Because many of us struggle because we're trying to give people of us what they don't want from us. Oh, 
I'm a pastor so I can preach my pain. There's a lot of people, not y'all, they don't hear no more, but there are people. <laughs> look straight. Y'all like, is it you? Are you the one or should we look? But there are people who often aren't present but still want the results of my poor. Mm. And I can tell who they are because they'll ask me a question I already answered. But if you were present, you would have got what everybody got. But you missed the poor because your absence really spoke to your expectation. Oh, my God. All right, let me move. So watch this. Let me mature you. Because being present is not solely about attendance. It's about attention. Because there are some of you that give God your attendance, but you haven't given him your attention. So God has to keep repeating cycles in your life and repeating his word in your life and you're waiting for God to give you a new instruction when you didn't follow the first one and then you're wondering why am I having the same season and cycle because maybe I haven't applied what he said in the first place so instead of just giving God my attendance it is great you showed up but how did you show up Oh, my God. What was your heart like? What was your mind like? Was your ground ready for the seed? What is the ground? Your ground is the heart. And the, what is the seed? The seed is the word of God. So if I'm not in position and my heart is not ready to receive, it's just going to be another message. And you'll like when I say ghetto fabulous stuff. You'll like when I tell them you too big for them. Oh, preach, Pastor Jay. You'll like that stuff. But when I start telling you that you got to give some stuff up and let some stuff go and God's getting ready to prune, you get tight. You start checking your phone. Is church almost over yet? Girl, I'm about to go get some lunch after this. What you want? And you tune out and you stop giving God your attention and then you wonder why life gets harder and seasons and cycles are on repeat watch this so tuning and pruning go together tuning and pruning go together because here's the reality you can be an unproductive Christian you can be unproductive you can be an unproductive Christian this is why he says in verse 2 he says he cuts off every branch in me that does not produce fruit, which says this, that everything on your tree is not fruit. Oh, my God, wall. I, uh, feel me. You always got my back. I want you to get it because everything on your tree is not fruit. And, and he's trying to, to get us to understand that he's a good gardener. And a good gardener? can discern the difference between what's fruit and what's foolish. And many of us are calling foolishness fruit just because it's growing. Oh, my God. All growth is not healthy. All growth is not healthy. Unhealthy growth, y'all know what it's called? It's called swelling. Any of y'all, okay, okay, y'all grown down, y'all fancy. You order bedroom sets. People like Dave and Shauna have nice bedroom sets that it takes a team of people to put together. You don't carry it up the stairs. They assemble it in your room. P people like Shamika has a nice bedroom set. Gael has a nice bedroom set. There's some people that are just rich and wealthy, and they just, they just point where they want it, and people show up. They just have it. But anybody... Remember old school like me? You didn't have a full bedroom set. But at the bottom of your bed, you had that metal frame. <laughs> and at the, you click it, Fred. And at the end of your bed, if you don't step right, you ever hit your toe in the middle of the night and speak in an unknown. Just, mm, and a new language comes out. Look, I'm more spiritual than I thought. You, 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 you stub it. Watch this. And all of a sudden, your big toe starts throbbing, and it looks bigger than the other one. It grew, but it wasn't healthy. It was swelling. 
just because you have growth does not mean it's healthy. God wants you to produce healthy growth in your life that you're not just swelling. He wants it to be healthy. He wants it to remain. He wants it to be something that, that, that is long lasting. Here's why it's so important. I just want to throw this in. Since this pastor's appreciation month all over the world, he says in Jeremiah 13, 15, he says, and I will give you pastors according to my heart which will feed you with knowledge and understanding because one of my responsibilities is to be a gardener with God so I can point to the things that are growing on your life and say that is not fruit, that is foolishness. And although it might seem like it's productive, it's not producing anything healthy. Just because it's a relationship does not mean it's a healthy one. Just because it's some money does not mean it's good money. Just because it's an opportunity does not mean it's God. Sometimes you need someone in your life that can help you point out the difference between fruit and foolishness. Here's the second thing, and I'm going to insert Elder Elect Robin McCaddy. Here's the second thing we see in verse 5. He says, I am the vine and you are the branches. And if you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. And apart from me, you can do nothing, no thing. You can't accomplish anything. You're going to be unproductive and unsuccessful. Here's the second, second thing I want you to write down. That dead things lead to dead ends. Sorry, Mike. Dead things lead to dead ends. <laughs> I wrote it wrong. Dead things leave to dead ends. He says, I am the vine and you are the branches. And if you remain in me, you will bear much fruit. And apart from me, separated from me, disconnected from me, you can't accomplish anything. She said this in her uh, amazing message. She said, and the healthy branches need room to reach their full potential and height. The only way for healthy blooms and branches is that they need room, and watch this, and an unobstructed path to grow. So the dead ones are cut away. In other words, unhealthy weight, unnecessary dead things are getting in the way of your growth. They're getting in the way of you being productive. It gets, it gets in the way. Okay, uh, uh, things that need to be pruned get in the way of God's power in your life because it will drain you from your focus. Well, when you start finding yourself drained from what God wants you to focus on, you start saying, you know what, maybe this wasn't a God thing in the first place. I was talking to somebody, brothers, when I, we had a great time. Didn't we whoop on the police yesterday? Yeah. It was amazing. <laughs> Y'all like, what? No, we played basketball, y'all, we, but we whooped the police. We, we were whooping on them. And uh, it was an amazing time. And then after that, the guys went out and we got fitted for our suits because we're gala ready. Any fellas gala ready? Y'all ready, ready? All right, I got five guys. All right, burgers and fries, five guys. Okay, but, but we got gala ready and then we hung out and we had dinner and we were hanging out. And I was talking to one of the guys and I was sharing this. And I was telling him, I said, listen, don't allow a new job opportunity to make you forget your prayer in your last season. Because there was a season that you prayed for where you are. Don't lose it because he answered a prayer. Oh, my God. And sometimes good opportunities can become dead ones. Because although it looks like it's giving life, it's really draining you from the place that God wants you to be. So watch this. She says, Robin said this. This is so good. This is a good message. I use her whole point. But watch this. She says, she says, how do you know if a person or situation is dead? Watch this, Maya. Watch what your mama said. She said, look at the fruit it produces. Oh, my God. Y'all missed that. Y'all slow but worth waiting for. Let me say it again. How do you know if a person or situation is dead? Look at the fruit it produces. Okay, y'all don't like the way she said it. Let me tell you how Jesus said it. In Matthew 7, 17 and in verse 20. Watch what he says. He says, a good tree produces good fruit. And a bad tree produces bad fruit. Watch what he says in verse 20. Yes, just as you can identify a tree by its fruit, you can identify people by their actions. 
Isn't this preaching? And I, and I want you to see it. So watch what she says. Y'all ain't even ready for this. This is the clinical side of her. She said, so, so we need the anointing to become better social observers. Mm. What does that mean? It means I got to watch you before I trust you. Uh, the Bible says it like this. Lay your hands on no man suddenly, right, ministers? Lay your hands on no man suddenly. That does not mean don't be quick to pray for people. That's not what that means. It means don't be quick because your right hand means agreement and authority. So he says don't be quick to agree and give authority to something that you have not tested yet. Right? So I have to observe you first. I have to watch your character for a while. I got to make sure you are who you post to be. Y'all catch that? I got to make sure you are who you really say you are. And, and so I got to watch you. So I have to be a better social observer to see if you just putting on for people or is this really you? Just, just bump somebody and say, who sent you? Go ahead and ask him. Watch this. So he says in James 1.9, he says, be quick to listen and slow to speak and slow to get angry. <laughs> so, so we can't be afraid to allow dead weight off of our tree because things that are not strong enough will be easily shaken. This is why you have to stop chasing people to stay connected to you when trouble comes. Because some of the same people you're chasing are the people that God was pruning through the shaking. How dumb would it look if the wind blew and crab apples stopped falling off the tree and you see the tree bend down with his branches trying to pick up crab apples? The tree would look stupid and ridiculous. Some of y'all would run. <laughs> you, you'd run because trees ain't supposed to do that. Neither are people. You're not supposed to chase after people that God has been pruning out of your life. Stop chasing opportunities that God has pruned out of your life. There are seasons where you prayed to be delivered from certain things, and sometimes your deliverance came from pruning. And watch this. Oh, God, can I tell you the evidence of pruning? The evidence of pruning is not just people leaving, because I don't want to make this something about people. It's not always about people. It's about your mind. God will prune you by challenging your perspective. Yeah. Oh, my God, this is good. Maybe at, at 1130, they'll get it better. God will show you that he's pruning you by the perspective you have. Because the way that you start looking and feeling about stuff begins to change before your actions ever do. That's why you could go somewhere and you ever want to go to a restaurant to get something to eat. And you go there and you had your mindset on what you was going to get. And you got there you're like, you know what? I don't even think I want that anymore. Or, or watch this. Here we go. After you've been exposed to better. You ever been so hungry that you try to just, you know, I'm going to just, you know it's bad when you say, I'm going to just grab. That's when you know. You don't really want what you're about to eat. You just want something real quick. And you go after what used to satisfy you. But that little cheeseburger with no pickles. Yeah. You, you go, at, now, now it doesn't have the same effect as it did. Then you try to get fancy. Let me get some fries with no salt. And then ask them for salt because you want them for, and still it does nothing for you. Why? Because God's pruning you and he's changing your palate and he's causing your desires to change. He's doing something in your heart. This is why the Bible says in the Old Testament they were circumcised of the flesh because circumcision was a representation of covenant. But in the New Testament they didn't get circumcised in their flesh. Jesus said they were circumcised in their heart. And other other words he says I begin to prune their heart so when things came that were unlike me it would it would immediately give them an alert that you're better than this go ahead and bump somebody and bump somebody and say you're better than this I uh, find somebody else and tell them you're better than this Whatever your struggle has been, you're better than it. Whatever you've been going through, you're better than it. Whatever bad choices you've made, you're better than it. Whatever you decided in life, I'm going to just grab real quick. Guess what? you better than it. That relationship that you were over five years ago, but you're still entertaining because you don't want to be lonely. Go ahead and tell somebody you're better than it. <laughs> 
What God is trying to do is produce something in you that causes you to see. It's not that I'm better than people. It's that I'm better than who I used to be. So he begins to prune my heart so that he can show me that I'm changed. But if I keep chasing after what he's shaking out of my life, dead things lead to dead ends. And here's what I've realized. You can't have more of God and and have more of everything else at the same time. You don't, you're not built that way. You don't have capacity for that. You're not even mature. We're not even mature enough for that. So we have a, a point where God begins to prune us. And so he wants to block the noise in our lives. Let me say one more thing to you because this is really important. I feel it and I know this is something because I was preaching circles and cycles and y'all seem so excited about circles and cycles that I got to do a part two so I will do a part two of circles. Y'all want a part two of circles and cycles but we'll do part two of circles and cycles but here's a little uh, precursor to circles and cycles part two and I want you to write this. If you don't write anything else because some of y'all just been staring at me like a fish and a fishbowl. What you looking at? I'm looking at you. You're looking at me but I want you I want you I want you to write this down because this is very important. This will be your a word, this is your prophetic word for the rest of this year. This is going to be your prophetic word for this series. This is going to be a word for, if you don't get nothing else, you better get, if you don't get this, if, if you miss this, you're gonna, you will miss. If you don't write this down, if you don't get it together, he, here's, here's what I want you to write down. It's not that deep, but it's deep. I want you to write this down because some of y'all are going to need this. On Wednesday at 12.13 p.m., you're going to be sitting there, and this is going to hit you, and I'm telling you, it's going to change your whole, it's going to change. Everything will change when, when you... When you write this down, I know it's not gonna, not gonna be for everybody, but but it's gonna be for somebody. You need to write this down. Stop crying over everybody. That's all. That's it. Not that deep. Some of y'all are like ah, uh, that's all. Yeah, that's it. Stop crying over everybody because everything and everybody is not God's choice for you, anyways. And we spend too much time crying over people places and things that is no longer for us even in the bible the apostle uh uh, not the apostle (laughs) samuel goes to saul and and he says uh he goes to david and he says how long he says how how long will you mourn after saul (laughs) because you you were good with him but you were limited Oh, my God. Whoa. I'm telling you, when you look at 1 Samuel later this week, whoa, when you get a chance to read 1 Samuel, I want you to consider this. He said, he said, how long will you mourn after Saul? Saul was the king. Saul had appointed David to be his musician. Saul is the one who seemingly put David in position to become important. If it wasn't for that moment, he would have never even fought Goliath. So so Saul was important, and it looked like David needed him because Saul placed him. But, But what God was showing him is that he was good with Saul, but he was limited because he couldn't be the king while Saul was the king. Oh, my God. So it wasn't until Saul died that David could enter into his kingdom. Until some things in your life dies, until you let some stuff go and stop mourning what God's releasing, you'll never step into your kingdom. You'll never become what God's called you to become because you're still living in the morning. And God is trying to deliver you from the things that were overwhelming you, even the things, watch this, that made you good. Because sometimes it's the good things that can block you from the great things. Sometimes it's the small victories that keep you from the big big wins. Watch this. This is why being a loser, I told y'all last week, is important because the loss will make me better. But if you win every time, you're going to think you better than you are. It, sometimes, oh, God. So, so can I tell you this? The level of your pruning is equal to the level of your production. And if there's anybody here that God's been pruning you in a big way, that means you're getting ready to produce. In a big, who am I talking to in this room? I know Sean's on a break, but can 
somebody jump on your feet and give God a praise for whatever the level of pruning that he's doing in your life. That means you're getting ready to produce more than you've ever produced. You're getting ready to go further than you've ever gone. You're getting ready to accomplish more than you ever accomplished. If there's anybody in the room that I'm talking to, open your mouth and give God a shout. Somebody shout, he's pruning me. Y'all can be seated. We got one more thing and we got to go. So watch this. So dead, dead things lead to dead ends. But here's the last one. Pruned people are producing people. Pruned people are producing people. Why? Because God... I'm getting ready to mess with you. I, I got to warn you that this is why this church is not for everybody, but it is for somebody. Because I'm going to shake your religious tree. I'm not claiming to be the best preacher ever or even that you've ever heard. But I will always be different. And I'm not going to just tell you what's popular. I'm not just going to repeat a whole bunch of recycled church cliches and pastoral things. But, but I want to I, I challenge you. And I want to tell you something very important. I'm going to say some things that sometimes if it's uncomfortable, I want you to think about it. I want you to think about it. And here's, here's, here's one of those statements. Y'all ready? Here's one of those statements that I want you to see. That God has called you to work in the world. Now, the religious person hearing this, what about that kingdom? Y'all missed that. God has called you to work in the world. Um, Y'all know if I preach, I'm going to preach Bible. Let me show you. He says in verse 16, Jesus says, you didn't choose me. Remember, I chose you. And I put you in the church. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, my version. I put you. In a denomination, oh no, I'm sorry, it's, it's a little small on here. I, I put you in a tradition. Oh, oh, my fault, I see it now. I chose you and I put you in the world to bear fruit. Oh my God. Oh my goodness, y'all missed that. Your assignment is to produce in the world. He's not calling you to be worldly, but he is calling you to the world. Mm, this is good. So pruning allows you to be, to be positioned to produce in the world. So God prunes you in private so that he can produce through you in public. Okay, can, can I go deeper with this? Um, uh, you're called... To produce in the world. You're called to produce in public. Your understanding and relationship with the church has got to change. I know it's going to get tight. It's going to be all right, though. We're going to be family after this, I promise. Um, the word ministry means to serve. means to serve means to help people, to, to administer. It means to give of yourself, to put others first, to promote others and be selfless, not be self-centered, to serve. It's, it's when you go to a restaurant, and, and we used to call it a waiter back in the day, but now they call them servers because their responsibility is to make sure that you're satisfied and you get what you need. Everybody shout, serve. serve. So watch this. So you come to church, commit to ministry, and care about the mission so others can follow me as I follow Jesus. So here's my question to you, and I hope you don't leave the church. What would this church be like if everybody was like you? Uh-oh. I knew y'all was going to get quiet. Would this place be full? Oh, 
Oh, now there's no amens. Hold on. I, I might have had one. Can you grab my bag in the office? I might have some amens in there. I, I might need my. Um, would, the, would Bible study be full if everybody was like you? Would, 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 would there be more money in the church if everyone was like you? My mic's getting low. Let me. Um, would more sinners attend church if everybody was like you? Y'all waiting for like another point. Like, please move off this point. Would there be more heartfelt experiences if more people were like you? See, this is where we got it twisted. Let me help you. We're going to go. We act like, can, can I tell you what we act like? We act like the world is our development and the church is our display. So, so we're only good and effective with our gifts in the building. We're important in church. Got my title and my seat and my crew, my squad, my circle. I got all that. I'm, I'm here. I'm, you know, we got us and we come to church. We're our motivation again. If you don't have it, we have plenty on sale in the lobby right after church. Go get you some. But here's what I'm trying to tell you. We're important in church. We're anointed and gifted in church. I have a thus saith the Lord in church. So, so we go and we act like the world is developing us so we can be on display in church. But what God has been showing me through the work of the Holy Spirit is that the church is for your development and the world is for your display. Mm. So I get it here so I can use it there. Oh, my God. Let me get, give me an amen. There's one hiding part. I don't freaking amen. Y'all ain't talking to me. I'm trying to tell you something that you got to stop being important here and be able to be effective out there so that you get a message like this and you can live it when you leave. How good is it if you praying for other people who are praying for you? There's some people who are far from God that need to hear his voice through your mouth. There's some people that need a thus saith the Lord from your mouth. There's some people that need encouragement from your mouth and if you're only effective here then where is your anointing and God is raising up some people who are not just going to be effective clones in church who are not just going to fit the mold of religion but God's getting ready to break your mind out of where you've been he's getting ready to prune you from what you thought he's getting ready to prune you from your limitation he's getting ready to prune you from your small box of expectation because he wants to put you on display to be productive in the world. And I got to close, but destiny doesn't happen for the undecided. Doesn't happen for them. He prunes the planted. And I got to tell you that if destiny doesn't happen for the undecided, it means that once you make a decision... You can start to walk in destiny. Destiny calls for God to have to stretch you. Here's the word the Lord told me this morning. Watch this. This revelation God gave me this morning. He said, destiny calls for God to stretch you. But do you know what fruit is? Fruit is a seed that was stretched. Oh, my God. This is, this is deep. Fruit is a seed that was stretched. If the seed was never stretched, it would never become fruit. It would just stay a seed. So if God is stretching you, that means he's getting ready to produce through you. If God is stretching you, you're, buried, you're planted but not buried. If God is stretching you, then everything that fit before, come on pregnant ladies, doesn't fit right now because you're growing. Yeah, God's getting ready to, oh God, I see some bellies getting ready to get bigger in the spirit. I, I'm telling you, God is getting ready to do some stuff because you ain't going to fit what you used to fit. You're not going to be comfortable where you used to be comfortable. You get ready to move in a place that you've never moved into before God's getting ready to stretch your territory. He's getting ready to expand you and enlarge you and do 
more in you than you could have done for yourself in a shorter time. I'm trying to tell you what God is getting ready to do in your life is to stretch you. And if there's anybody that's being stretched, I dare you to praise God for the stretching. Because as he's stretching you, he's increasing you. As he's stretching you, he's taking your mind. As he's stretching you, he's giving you more capacity. Somebody just shout stretch. And we got to go. Let's stand in the most harmful, hurtful, uncomfortable, challenging space to be in is a space where you're being stretched. Like at this point in my life, um, I don't do it the way I should. But because I'm older, um, I need to stretch longer. Because the potential of me being injured is higher because of where I am. See, when I was younger, I could drink a soda and go to the basketball court and just stop playing. Yo, I got next. Let's go. Yeah, go out there and give you a quick 30. Now, I got to wait. Got to stretch. And it's uncomfortable. Because if you're like me, and you weigh more than you used to, you sweat when you stretch. Anybody? Sometimes, watch this. Oh, can I help you? Sometimes the stretch is harder than the gain. Sometimes I'm sweating when I'm stretching. Sometimes it hurts more when I'm being stretched. But the pain of the stretch does not equal the pain of not stretching. Because the pain of the stretch will get me good. But the pain of not being stretched will get me injured. And God is trying to get you to a place so you can live in him without injury. He didn't say in this life you won't have pain. In this life you're going to have some pain. But your pain will have purpose. He's not trying to block you from pain. He's trying to block you from injury. And the reason many of us fall and fail is not because of pain. It's because of injury. And God stretches you through the pruning process. The pruning power is for God to develop something in you. Watch what Jesus says. We got to pray. But Jesus says, I'm the vine. You are the branches. My father, he's the gardener. And as long as you're connected, he'll be committed to the pruning process. But he says, every branch that's in me that the father prunes it becomes useless and it's only good to burn. It means that my greatest potential is not in what I can do on my own. My greatest potential is being connected to the vine. My greatest potential is allowing him to do what he wants to do in me so he can produce more. So him cutting is not a deficit. Him cutting is destiny. That means it's not for me to lose. It's for him to use. I didn't even mean for that to rhyme, but it just, it felt good, Dave. It felt good when I said it. I was thinking it and it felt good. But it's not about me losing. It's about him using. He wants to use you. And anything unnecessary, he's going to cut off. Well, thanks for tuning in. We pray that this message added value to your life, that it drew you closer to God, that it built you up in your faith and encouraged you. Excited about all of the things that God has planned for your life. If you are in the Randolph, Massachusetts area, of course, we'd love to see you in person. Come visit the building. But if not, 
keep watching us online. And if this is your first time, maybe you just stumbled upon us. You can like, subscribe, and share so that more people can get the good news, the gospel of Jesus Christ. If you want to give and partner with us financially because you see the great work that Motivation Church is doing, we have some information below where you can give and partner with us. But again, thank you, stay planted, and we'll see you again.